Hello, Facebook. How is everyone? I'm going to give it a few minutes to let everybody hop on. In today's live, I'm going to be doing a little bit of designing in Procreate. I just thought that I would go live and give everybody an opportunity to learn how I use Procreate and um, an op a great opportunity for um, a live question and answer. I'm just going in here and tagging some reminders on those posts. And hi, Heidi, I'm so glad you're here. Um, and then we will get started. Just making sure I have all my reminders tagged. And if you have to tune out at any point, that's okay. I'll make sure to post the replay on the group timeline and you can always come back and finish watching it. If you have questions at any point, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I may not be able to answer them right away, but I promise I'll get to it. Um, and if for some reason it's been a few minutes and I haven't answered your question, comment it again. I may miss it. Hi, Tina. How are you today? Okay. Now... I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll get started, so bear with me as I get you flipped around and adjust my tripod. Let's see, flip you around. Okay, and I hope this view is okay for you guys. This is the first time I've ever gone live doing this in Procreate, and I'm a little nervous. I've done Facebook Lives before in several tutorials, but... Um, so yeah, it's a little out of my comfort zone to be doing this live. Nobody ever watches me design, except for my husband, and I still get nervous when he does it. So first thing I wanted to show you is here is all of my can here are all of my canvases. Um, I don't typically name them. As you can see, they all say Untitled Artwork, and then underneath you can see what size they are. You can click this, and you can name it. Um, I'm going to Valentine Gnome. And then you just click done. Just kidding. It's, <laughs> it's going to freeze on me. I have noticed that it's been freezing on me a lot here lately. Um, there it goes. Yeah. So you can see where it named it. If it freezes, just swipe up and completely exit out of it. And then when you come back in, everything should be normal again. Okay. So we're going to start with a new canvas. And by that, we're going to click the plus sign here. And I'm going to go with a paper size, which is 8.5 by 11. A lot of people use something different. I'm confident that my DPI is high enough that I can design everything on an 8.5 by 11. Unless I'm designing something for an MDF blank, and then that's a whole nother tutorial. But, um, so here is our blank canvas, and really quickly I get a lot of questions on the equipment that I use. I am using a 12-inch iPad Pro. It is the third generation, and I'm using the Apple Pencil that's compatible with it. I can't remember which generation pencil this is. I think it's the second, but don't hold me to that. I love... Using the Apple Pencil, you can use um, off-brand styluses. They work great, but I prefer the Apple Pencil because it's magnetic to my iPad right there. Let's scoot it over so you guys can see it. It just clicks in there, and as you can see up here, um, it charges while it's connected, and it's connected through Bluetooth. A big difference in the Apple Pencil and your stylus is your pressure. So you can see as I'm drawing, if I have light pressure, it's going to be a thin line. If I have heavy pressure, it's going to be a thicker line, okay? And then I'm just going to hit this undo button over here to clear that out so we can get started. Okay, I have a design in my head. I have a, a couple of designs in my head to try to get into this one live. Hopefully you guys can stick with me that long. So the first one I want, I just kind of want a western theme and I want it to say heifer please. And then like I want the cow head coming out of the word heifer. So we're going to start with, I'm going to hit this wrench up here, and I'm going to add text. And we're going to slide it down. As you can see, it's turquoise. You can click this circle button, which is your color. You have your classic wheel, or your disc, your classic, where you can use your different, move these to find your different colors in your color wheel. Um, you can use harmony. Um, this will show you if you're using a turquoise color, it'll show you what it thinks, what color it thinks 
goes with that one. So it's great for creating color palettes. You can do value where you can type in your hexadecimals. It's great for branding. Hi Candy! And then you have palettes where you can create new palettes. Swipe to delete. Click to name. Click the plus sign to create a new. You can pull palettes in from your camera from different places. Um, I typically stay on the disc for me. You can, if I'm using, I'm going to create a new layer here. If I'm using this turquoise color and then I want to switch to a red, okay, see how it changes here? Click it and hold it and it'll go back to your previous color, okay? Another thing is right here, you can see that I'm on a pencil. If you double click your iPad, watch right here, or double click your Apple Pencil down here, it's going to switch to eraser for you. And you can switch back and forth that way. Over here is the size of your brush, the opacity of your brush, basically the transparency. If I turn it down, it's going to be real light. If I turn it up, it's going to be real dark. Okay. Um, you can click your brush. Procreate comes with a lot of different brushes. Um, you can also buy them and you can also create them. I have bought one and I have created one. Um, but I typically don't use those. I usually use Studio Pen to draw. Of course, you can click on it and change your properties. I think that's a little too detailed for a beginning beginner tutorial. We'll get into that eventually, but not today. So I'm going to swipe this layer that has all of my doodles on here. I'm going to swipe it to the left. And as you can see, you can lock it, duplicate it, or delete it. I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to go back into my text and get started on the design. So I want it to say heifer please and I want all of them, all the letters to be capitalized. And I'm going to type in heifer. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is mine, my autocorrect doesn't typically work unless I don't want it to and then it does work in Procreate. So um, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. You don't want to have any misspellings. Um, I'm going to double click on my word. It's going to select all of the letters. I'm going to click this, these two little A's over here. And it's going to open up a bunch of different options, okay? And so over here is all are all of my fonts that I have. Um, I download a lot of different fonts. It came with fonts whenever I first downloaded it, but it didn't really come with the ones, really cute ones that I like to use. So I'm going to go with this font. It's called Pumpkin Cheesecake. Here you can change the size of it. And as you can see, the bigger you get, it's going to cut it off. Don't worry, grab this little blue dot here, slide it over, and you can move it around, okay? Um, kerning is going to move your letters closer together or further out. I'm going to keep it on zero. If you get it here and you say, oh no, I want it to go back to zero, just double click it, and it's going to go right back to zero automatically for you. And then um, tracking is going to do the same thing. Leading is going to be your line space. So if I make another line and then I adjust your leading, it's going to move my two words that are in separate lines. It's going to move them closer and further apart. Baseline, well, pretty self-explanatory, moves it up and down, moves the baseline, and also opacity here as well. You can change your format. You can underline it. You can outline it. As you can see here okay I'm gonna hit the undo button over here to the left to show you guys what that did well it, that undo button won't work after you've added text um, but maybe let's see I'll duplicate it and then I'm gonna move it down so you guys can see what it does outlining it okay so that's great to have whenever you're wanting your letters to stand out or give it some dimension and then over here, you can hit this button, and that's going to line it up in a vertical line for you. And again, you can change the format of it, okay? So, and then you can make it all caps, which this font is automatically all caps anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But now that I have the word I'm starting with, I'm going to hit this arrow up here, and I'm just going to move it around and size it a little bit bigger here. And then... I'm going to hit the wrench and I'm going to hit add text again. I'm not going to put this in the same box as this because I want this one to be a different font. Um, 
I'm going to go with lowercase letters here. It's not showing lowercase yet, but it will when I change the font. Again, I'm going to double click, hit my double A's over here, and I'm going to slide down through here and kind of try to decide on what font I want. You will quickly learn that in the process of designing, some of us take forever picking fonts. So I may adjust this. I may come in and adjust this later because I'm trying to make this a fairly quick um, tutorial, but I'm awful at picking fonts because I just want to sit here and play with them all day. But um, I think I'm going to go with this one. This one is called Bali Moon or Bally Moon, however you say it. And I'm just going to stretch it out here. And okay, I don't not really dig in the turquoise color on this. Yes, I will. Thank you, Tina. Um, so I want to change it. I'm going to click on the word and I'm going to click up here and I'm going to click black and it's going to change it. Heifer. Mm, we'll leave it turquoise for now. And we're going to go onto this layer, this layer number one, which was the beginning layer that we started with. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. I will slow down. I'm just, like I said earlier, this is my first time to do a Procreate tutorial live. So let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And if I'm going too fast, holler at me and I will slow down. So again, we're going to go back down to this layer one, which is the original layer that Procreate created itself when we opened the canvas and I want to put a background on this okay so I'm gonna hit this little wrench up here and I'm gonna click insert file and it's gonna pull up my iCloud files or you can swipe this up here this little bar okay and I'm gonna click and hold my files tab and I'm gonna bring it over here and it's gonna give me a split screen okay and so here's all of my clip art and um, clip art files that I have and I'm gonna click textures and prints because I have a pretty good idea of what I want the background to be um, not that that's kind of what I'm going for but I don't really like to use that when it's low quality um, it came in a clip art bundle that I got but I try not to use it so I'm gonna go with a whitewash wood but the catch is I want it to be turquoise and all of my wood backgrounds that I have I'm gonna go with this one are white so I'm gonna show you how to change that I didn't mean to duplicate that <laughs> sorry well of course it's gonna do that now give me a minute to get back to my files Okay, now let's try that again. Textures and prints. I'm gonna go down to my wood. No one, it's in this one. Nope, it's not. It's in this one. Nope, that wasn't the one I wanted. I'll get with it in just a minute. Okay, here we go. So this is the one I want. I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna drag it and drop it. And that's gonna pull it into Procreate for me. Okay, and then I can just swipe this over and close that. Um, obviously that looks kind of off shaped so I'm gonna hide it for now I'm gonna click this button and hide it and I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm just gonna use um, let's use pink so it stands out so I can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna hit my brush over here I'm gonna change it to the Stuco brush I'm going to check my sizing over here hopefully you guys can see that kind of gives you a preview of what it's like and I want my opacity to be all the way up and so I'm going to just use my pencil and I'm going to create, I'm going to bump the camera obviously and make you guys see sick. I'm just going to kind of scribble here for lack of a better word. And I'm just going to kind of make the shape of the background that I want. Go over it a little bit. And then I'm going to click this and it's not exactly how I wanted it. As you can see, it kind of goes crooked, so I'm going to rotate it just a bit. I can freeform it, make it a little bit smaller. I can click warp, and I can change it all the way around. I can move it up and down, just however, and make it fit around my words. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna click this to unselect that. Now I'm going to take this whitewash, this wood background that I have, and I'm gonna make it show up again. And I'm gonna drag it above, click it, hold it, and drag it above the pink layer, okay? And then I'm going to, it's not covering my whole canvas, so I'm gonna click this ar this arrow here, and I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna click fit to screen. If you can't see that, you can swipe the comments to the left, and that's gonna make it fit on your canvas, whichever side fits first. Obviously, it's gonna be the height on this one. But that's okay, I can stretch it and make it the same size as the pink. So I'm gonna hit this arrow again and I'm gonna click free form and I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna drag it over, click this and drag it over. Now, I'm gonna click this layer and over here are a whole bunch of different options. I'm gonna click clipping mask and what that does is it takes that white wood that we have and it forms it to the layer underneath it which is the pink that I drew, okay? But again, I don't want it to be white. I think I want it to be turquoise. So I'm gonna click my color circle here and I'm gonna go with turquoise. I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna drag and drop it. If you hold it when you drop it, you can change your fill threshold, okay? You don't want it to fill all the way in, you just slide it to the left, you wanna fill it more, you slide it to the right, okay? I know you can't read heifer. I'm gonna change that, I'm gonna click on I'm going to go up to that layer, click on the word, and I'm going to change the color of the word. I don't want it white. I'm debating whether or not I fill this with another pattern, so I'll come back to that. Um, but again, we're here. This is what we have so far. I'm going to add in my cow head that I want to put in there. Again, you can not do that. I'm going to click on this layer so it'll stop selecting the text. Okay, so again, you can hit here. You can swipe up, click your files, split your screen, or you can hit the wrench and you can click insert file and it's going to pull up your iCloud files. If you want to insert a photo from your camera roll, you can click that. Um, but I typically go to insert file and then just slide through my um, text or my clip art, my file, my iCloud files to find what I'm looking for. I'll get the words out in a minute. I'm going to use this Serape here and I think that's what I want the heifer to be filled with. So same thing that we did with the wood grain for the background. I'm going to take this, as you can see it imported very small. Um, again, that's quality of your designs, um, so I don't get on my soapbox. We're just going to move on. Click your arrow, click free form. I'm going to stretch it out to where it covers all of my word. Okay. Now I'm going to click over here on layers and it's behind the word on my canvas and under my word over here in the layers. So I'm going to click the layer. I'm going to hold and slide it, drag it up on top of that. And again, I'm going to click it, and I'm going to click Clipping Mask. But you can't really see it, so let's outline it. Take that layer that your word is on, swipe it to the left, duplicate it, go to the one on the bottom, click over so it will select your word, click the two A's, and click this O over here, and it will outline it. But I don't want it white, so I'm going to click my color circle, and I'm going to change it to black. Okay, so now we can um, add in, did I spell heifer wrong? I may have, I'm not the best at spelling, so please enlighten me if I spell heifer wrong. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm going to insert, I'm really going to go get the cow head now. So I'm going to hit this wrench, I'm going to hit insert file, go back over, and I have some cows in my, I'm thinking I want to use this one. But let me check one more folder. Farm animals, there it is. Let me check this one. Okay, 
I'm not connected to internet right now because I didn't want all of my notifications popping up. That's why all of these little clouds are here. If you're connected to internet, it won't do that. Um, so let's just go with this one for now. And another thing to keep in mind if you're new to sublimation, sublimation does not print white. So you don't want, um, not you don't, sorry. Sublimation does not print white. So anything you see that's white in a design, it will not print or transfer to your shirt or your substrate when you press it. Sublimation printers just don't have the, capa the capabilities of um, printing white. So I inserted my cow and he came down here and I clicked and hold him, held him and dr drug him up. Co how do you copy the outline layer? Okay, I will show you that, Tina. And do you get your files off Etsy or what's the place be best way to get files? So, Heidi, that's a good question. Um, first and foremost, before you use anybody else's artwork for anything, you need to make sure that you have the permission to do so. So, when I use clip art like this cow, if it is not in the product description, I personally always ask the seller before I purchase. Um, that's just to avoid them sending you cease and desist letters and everything. As a designer myself, it's really frustrating when people go against the terms. So it's good practice just to cover your bases and double check. As far as where you can get it, yes, Etsy. There's Etsy design bundles and creative fabrica, I think is how you say it. Um, I don't, I typically get mine from Design Bundles and Etsy. Try not to use a whole lot of clip art, to be honest. I like to draw a lot of my stuff, but um, purchasing clip art is a great place to start whenever you're just starting out. Um, so Tina wants to know how to double outline. So I have your black layer here, and I'm going to select the one that is not the outline, not the first outline. This is the full filled in word. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to drag it down behind because I want it to be behind the black. And of course that took off my clipping mask. No big deal. Just click it again, click clipping mask and it'll form it to that word. So let's say we wanted it to be, let's do this red so it's easy to see. I don't know why that clipped to that, but we're going to unclip that because that was, let's change this back to black. Sorry guys, I had the wrong layer. This one, I want this one to change to red, okay? So there's two ways you can do this. You can take this layer and you can make it a little bit bigger and you can just kind of give it a shadow or I'm gonna undo that by clicking the undo button. You can click it and you can Click your layer, click rasterize, if that's how you say it. Again, I have no idea. <laughs> and we're going to, um, sorry, I went blank. We're going to make sure that it's on this layer that you rasterize. So now that I've done that, you cannot change the letters on this layer. But we're going to go up here to this little magic wand that's right beside the wrench, and you're going to click Gaussian Blur. I'm going to click Layer. So it does the whole layer of that word, or you can click pencil where you can decide where it is. But I want it to be a consistent blur over it, so I'm going to click layer. Now, as you can see right here, it says Gaussian Blur Slide to Adjust. If you slide it to the right, you're going to get more blur. You slide it to the left, you're going to get less blur. So I'm going to slide it over here till I start to see that red behind it and I can see it in there. And so now I'm going to click this layer, slide it to the left, duplicate it, and I'm gonna duplicate it a couple of times. Okay, and then I'm gonna pinch those together. I did a total of four. It's gonna depend on what amount of blur you have and everything on how many times you duplicate it. But I'm going to grab with my fingers, I'm gonna grab this top layer and this bottom layer, and I'm just gonna pinch them together, okay? and it's gonna create one layer. Now, but you can't really see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it to the left and duplicate it again. And just keep doing that. Pinch it together, and there you go. Now you have an outlined layer behind the black.
and I actually kind of like that so I might leave it but I don't want it to be red so click it and click alpha lock and you'll see these little transparent boxes behind your word click the color wheel and change it to the color that you want it to be go back to your layers click this layer and click fill layer and it's gonna fill everything every mark that's in that layer it's gonna fill that in that's what alpha lock is now if you turn alpha lock off and you click fill layer it's gonna fill that entire layer again I'm gonna hit the undo button and there are a lot of shortcuts like the undo button and everything that you can do that's what I love about procreate there are so many ways to get to the same result and it just really boils down to what works best for you and so just keep that in mind this is how I do it everybody does it differently but yeah so let's make our cow show back up <laughs> so I click this little box to make him show to go away bring him back in now that he's there and I'm going to resize him I eventually I originally wanted him coming like out of the word heifer but I don't know I may just put him down here to the side I think I'm going to put him down here to the side. And then I'm going to move my please, the word please. I'm going to choose it. I'm going to click this arrow. And I think I'm going to pull it over here. Kind of have some fun with it. Maybe. Boop, 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 boop. Let's just put it back where it was by hitting the undo button. And start over pull him in here pull it in here and I think I want to change the color of it to that pink to match maybe let's see mm, not really liking that let's go back to black let's outline it in pink and see what that looks like okay I'll slow down sorry so I want to outline it in pink I'm gonna slide it to the left duplicate it click that layer click your word Click your color, choose your color, okay? Still can't see it, Kelsey, it's not at one. That's right, you have to go in and you have to choose for it to be at one. So you're gonna click your word, it's gonna pull up your keypad, click the double A's, click your O over here to the right and it's gonna outline it. And I think I want the pink outline behind Heifer to show up a bit more, so I'm just gonna duplicate that until I feel like it's giving me the same color <laughs> I might leave it like that I don't know I'm so indecisive this is why it takes me so long to make designs because I like to play around and yeah so let's weld those together by pinching them you can click this and click combine down and it's gonna group them to where they're not on the same layer but you can choose it as a layer to move it around um or you can click the the group button and click flatten and it's going to create one layer that does the same thing as pinching them together i just like to pinch them together it's a little bit faster for me okay so here's our design so far um i want that e to be on top of the cow so you have one of two options you can go in and you can click this little in here and you can change the transparency of your cow assuming and I don't want that to alter the way my cow looks because if I decide to move him around later I don't want his ear to be um, gone so I'm going to click this layer that says please and the outline layer I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna slide it to the right and it's gonna select both of those I'm going to click them and hold them down and I'm pull them on top of the cow. Or you could have just moved the cow underneath those. It doesn't really matter. But that's how I did it. Okay. I want my cow to stand out more. So let's give him an outline. Let's shadow him. So we're going to slide him to the left, duplicate him. Go down to this bottom layer. I said bottom really funny. Anyways, click his face. And you're going to click alpha lock and it's on black and I think that's what I'm going to go with. We're going to fill him black. So as you can see, if I get rid of that top layer, that's what it did to him. It covered the whole thing in black. 
which is what I want. So now I'm going to click him again and I'm going to turn my alpha lock off so I can blur him to make a shadow for him. If you leave your alpha lock on, you will not see the blur because it's not going to change anything outside of your original markings or clip art shape. So again, I'm going to go up here, make sure it's on the layer you want, up here to the magic wand, Gaussian blur and layer, swipe to the right, drag to the right for more blur. As you can see, more blur, slide, slide to the left for less blur. I'm going to go in with about that much and then I want to be able to see it. You can also move your canvas around just like you would if you were on an iPhone. But I'm going to duplicate it. Yeah, I like that. So there he is. Let's pull this up, this background up just a little bit to where there's not so much extra space here. Okay, I was making sure we don't have any questions. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. So I'm going to open my layers here and you know what? Instead of making my background shorter, I think I'm going to drag everything down. So instead of going in individually into each layer and moving those down, I'm going to select everything other than the background. So I'm going to start here with the word heifer and as you can see it's a dark blue. I'm going to click this and slide it to the right. See how it selects that? And I'm just going to do that with all of them. And you can delete all of them if you want, or you can group them together. I'm not going to do either one. I'm just going to leave them all selected. I'm going to hit this arrow over here, and I'm going to move it to where I think he needs to be. And I think that's pretty cute. Okay? So now I'm going to save him to my files. When you're doing digital downloads, I know that we just talked about how white does not sublimate or does not print in sublimation. However, it is a wonderful, wonderful practice to make sure that you save your files with a transparent background. Here's why. If you if your background isn't white, if it's an off-white, you're not really going to be able to tell that in your canvas. Um, but when you print it and you press it on something, if you're pressing it on something that's a light color, that off-white can show because sublimation does print whites and, or browns and tans. So you can get an off-white color. Another thing is things like white toner or direct to film or screen prints. When people buy files for those, they want a transparent background because those methods will print white. So it's just a good practice to keep everything with transparent with how to save your design with a transparent background. But before we do that, I just thought of something when we're talking about white. When you have your color wheel open, if you're right here, that kind of looks, let's, oh, let's make a new layer so you can see what I'm talking about. That looks white. That looks like white in my color wheel. Let's change our brush back to inking and studio pen. This is okay. I got interrupted there for a minute, so sorry about that. This is the brush that I typically use uh, the most. So as you can see, I went over here and I chose what I thought was white, but it's not really white. So open your color wheel back up, and if you double tap over here to the left. If you saw that, I'll do it again. Double tap, and it's going to automatically choose white for you. Okay? And same thing with the black. Okay? It's going to choose your 12, 3, 6, and 9 colors. Okay? So there's that. I'm going to delete that layer. Okay. Now, to save with the transparent background, this is your background color here. You can click it, and you can change your background color. I like to keep mine on white so I can see everything that's going on. Let's change it back to white, okay? So to save as a transparent, you're going to uncheck this box right here that's on the background color layer, okay? And so as you can see, it's got a transparent background. Now I'm going to click this wrench and I'm going to click the share tab. You can sh save it. Um, 
To procreate, you can save it to PSD, a PDF, a JPEG, a PNG, or a TIFF, or a TIFF, whatever you call that. I save mine as PNGs. That's the best form that works for me, the best file method that works for me. Now here you can obviously share it in a whole bunch of different ways. I like to save mine to my iCloud because it's easy for me to retrieve them on my computer to list, to print, anything I need to do with that. I do it from my computer. Um, so I'm going to save it to my files and I'm just going to name it heifer please and looky there I spelt heifer right <laughs> I don't know why I was so selfish self-conscious about that earlier so we're just gonna save it as heifer please and I'm gonna click done and I'm gonna make sure it's in the folder I want I'm gonna click save and that saved it now here's a quick little bonus for you um, just for watching and then I'll let you guys go um, if you have any questions, please comment and let me know. Even if you're watching the replay, if you don't see this little live button up here, the little live rectangle, it is a replay, but you can still ask me questions in the comments and I'll answer them as I come across them. So I'm going to turn my background color back on and I want to put a watermark over this so that I can list it in my Etsy shop as a digital. So I'm going to go in, just like I was adding files earlier, I have my watermark file saved. If you guys are interested in a watermark file like the one I'm about to show you, just let me know and I might open those customs up for the group. So I'm going to click the wrench, click add, insert file, and I know that mine's called Brantley Babes Watermark, so I'm just going to type in water and it's going to pull it up for me. Um, and it's going to pull it in here, but I want it to cover the whole canvas. As you can see, it doesn't cover the sides. So I'm going to click free form and drag it over, drag it over. And then I'm going to click my layers up here. And because I don't want it to be that dark, I'm going to click this little in and change the transparency of that entire layer. Okay. So see, it's not there, but it is. Okay. So nobody can t steal my design without purchasing it. Um, I feel that I price my files pretty fairly for anyone just starting out. Um, I also have a coupon code in the announcements that you can use on both of my Etsy shops for digitals and transfers. I want, as you can see, my watermark is black and so it's not showing up anywhere that there's black on the design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to alpha lock it and I'm going to make a white one on top of that black just to double protect my work. I'm going to click it again, and I'm going to click Fill Layer. And when you do the... Oh, I see that white mark here. I'm going to undo that by... Apparently, I did that on the first layer. Okay, so now that I have that mark out of there, I'm going to duplicate it. Alpha Lock. Make sure that it's white up here. And fill that layer. And then I'm going to take the in again, and I'm just going to turn that transparency down so it should just enough so it shows up a little bit but it's not distracting away from the design how do you do the font for the watermark i designed them with the text creation but as i said if anybody is interested in setting up a custom for me to do a watermark for you i'm more than happy to do that um let's see this one I'll zoom in so you can see it. This one has my name, my business name. It says Brantley Babes on one line and it says do not copy on the other. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that. And so now I'm going to save this image. I save my watermarks to my camera roll so they're easy to grab. I'm just going to click share, JPEG, and save it. And that is what today's Procreate tutorial consisted of. I'll give a few minutes to see if anybody has any questions. I'm tossing around the idea of doing Procreate courses. So if that's something you guys would be interested in, if you were able to learn something today and you want me to continue doing these, please let me know. Um, I want to do what helps you guys out, what helps you guys succeed. That's my main goal in my sublimation group here and my TikTok. So if you have any questions, just let me know. But like I said, that wraps up everything that I was going to cover today. 
Um, was going to try to fit in two designs, but I think that I don't want to be too overwhelming. So, <laughs> so much awesome info. I'm glad that you think it's awesome info, Tina. I really hope that it's helpful and that you guys got something from it. I'm so glad, Heidi. I'm so glad. That is the purpose of me trying to do this and help you guys out. I once was a beginner, too, and it was really hard to find information. Um, a lot of business owners don't like to hand out hand out the information that they've learned over the years, which is totally understandable. They've put in a lot of time and effort into it, and so if they don't want to share, that's their business, and they have every right to do that, but um, I feel that I just, I like to help people succeed, so, and by you guys succeeding, it helps me succeed as well, so we can work as a team and build each other up and hype each other up. Will we be able to rewatch this? Yes, you absolutely will, Delonda. It'll be here on the group timeline. Once I end this, I will post it there, and I will also head on over and add it to my YouTube channel. I may not get it on the YouTube channel today because I have a lot of retail orders I need to get pumped out, and, um from taking the day somewhat off yesterday for my birthday. But, um, yes, so it'll be here on the timeline, and then once I get it on the YouTube channel, I'll link that on the timeline as well for easy finding. I am so happy, Rochelle. Th I'm excited for the next one. Yes, continue. Okay, so I'm glad you guys liked it, and I will get the technical kinks worked out on how I can offer classes or courses, um, so it's a little more formal and a little more, it's a little easier to access than Facebook Live, because I don't like to rely on Facebook too much. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. Like I said, if you guys come up with any questions after this, or you're watching the replay and you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to drop them in the comments. Post on the group timeline. I'm so excited to be helping you guys learn this and that you're here in the group. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your hump day and a wonderful rest of the week. If you got some snow, stay warm. Keep that power on the best you